Welcome back to Twine Game, where today we are going to play D&D &D Medieval Fantasy RPG. Now, you're just the same as me. We're just getting into this here. Now, if we go to this one here, we could choose our story. But as you can see, they're all locked right now. So let's go through the first one and just see what it's like, okay? I'm life. 12, mana 14, gold 0, that's sad, and morale 0, that's also sad. Let's see what this does. Boost stats, achievement scores, gets coin and luck, upgrades, settings, save and load, question and tips, contact us, restore, purchase, and maps. Alright, now there is one thing I already noticed about the game is that it, if you play offline, it will only pay you a certain amount of gold and luck but if you play online and watch the ads your gold and luck double so this is important to know because if you want your gold and luck a lot and you're willing to deal with the ads that's fine but if you're not willing to deal with the ads you're gonna have to deal with more grinding per se if this uh, book game lets you do so uh, you are a young wizard seeking treasure and glory. You are walking along a path in the forest and one day's journey from Ring City, your beloved home. Night has just fallen and you are thinking about how it might be a good idea to find a campsite. After all, you are in goblin territory and it's dangerous to travel in the dark. Suddenly, you smell something awful. Reginald! Are you responsible for that outrageous smell? You ask the warrior striding ahead of you. Pray no! I am always downwind from my companions. When I squeeze the blows, <laughs> Reginald answers. You realize you have never encountered this stench before, and it is so close. And perhaps... It's your imagination, but is that muffled breathing you just heard? What do you do? Shout a warning to Reginald. Dive flat on your face. Hide. Stop listening. Ah, uh, shout a warning to Reginald. It's an ambush, you shout. Start of Reginald springs off to the ground like a jackrabbit, his chain armor jingling. Just then, out of the bushes rest several snarling goblins, their eyes glowing with green in the murky darkness. They charge with their short spears. Mana decreased by two, morale increased by one. With an arcane word and a flourish of one hand, you send a bolt of fire into the leader of the charge who dropped to the ground thrashing in flames reginald hacked down another with his sword and the remaining three run away whooping and yelping their cries are joined by others from the dark forest and around you many call from far too many goblins to fight toe to toe it's a hunting party probably tracking wild game we humans are a delicacy, much better than mutton, Reginald says. You regard the two dead goblins on the ground. Dead goblins are worth ten gold pieces per head in the city. Luckily, you don't need to carry their heads around. The city authorities will accept their left ear. What do you do? We do need gold, so let's cut off the ears. Get the ears! Get the ears! You exclaimed as you pull out your razor-sharp dagger from your belt. For a second, your sometimes slow-witted warrior sidekick does not understand, but as you start sawing away at the first ear, he gets the idea and fishes out his own dagger. Soon, you have a bloody goblin ear stuffed in your pocket and Reginald has one of his own. Nasty. Very... However, ten gold pieces are 
nearly six months of wages to a common laborer. So if you're willing to take the hit, what now, Reginald asks. Certainly there are excellent places to hide in the forest. If we can just make it until morning. True, the goblins may have dogs and their own sense of smell is keen, you say. We might climb a tree, then that would at least be defensible, Reginald suggests. You wish to be treed like a fox with goblins barking underneath. If you wish a position that is both defensible and allows some freedom of movement, we should hasten to the castle Inverness. It is near and we can fortify ourselves behind those walls, Reginald said. You frown. Is it Fortness? Yes, but inhabited by what? God knows what manner of creatures may have taken up residence in that ruin over the years. Hide in the forest. Garrison in the ruined walls. Climb a tree. Castle Inverness is near. Let us take refuge behind those stone walls, you say. Goblin, hunts, goblin hunting calls echo from all around the forest as the two of you dash up the path. A hundred meters or so, where you find a fork in the road. The path to the right appears to be seldomly used since it is nearly overgrown. The path to the left is clear, and you think you see firelight down the way. Could this be fire belong to the goblins? Or, if you're lucky, it is the campfire of another uh, adventuring party. What do you do? Castle. Never question a wizard. Investigate fire. Castle, never question a wizard. Enough foolishness! The castle interfere and her blessed walls, you proclaim. Reginald raises his fist. Yes, may their puny bodies break against our stone defenses. After a minute of stumbling down what is best described as a game trail, you see the shadowy husks of a ruin in the moonlight ahead. Unfortunately, the battle cries of your pursuers are closer than ever, and when you look back over your shoulders, you see glowing eyes. The two of you turn on a boost of speed, and soon the outer wall of the castle looms before you. It is above ten feet high and crumbling. You realize with horror that there are no holes on this side that are large enough to fit through. Meanwhile, Reginald a faster runner than yourself has disappeared around the north corner of the wall. A shoot spear whistles past your head. You look back and see at least four of the little beasts. What do you do? Followed Reginald, jump the wall, spell mana one, turn and blast them, mana four. You turn the north to follow Reginald. You're almost reached the corner of the wall and arrows stab into your shoulder. When you round the corner, you don't see your friend, but there is a selection of a party crumbling wall, and you think you can climb swiftly. Another arrow whisks by you. You're able to roll over the top of the battlement and onto the rotten wood floorboards on the other side. In a few seconds, there are four goblins at the base of the wall, chattering angrily. One of them begins to climb up the rotten rock. You decide this is a good place to take stand. There is a lot of loose rocks at the top of the wall. You're not particularly strong, thanks to your inactive life as a wizard. However, you expect you could push a few large rocks down upon this climber. On the other hand, they are all out in the open, and your combat spells would certainly be effective now. Just fry the climber, just fry them all, drop some rocks. Fry them all. Crushing move. Points plus two, coins plus two, luck plus one. Nice. You lean down and call forth the magical power within you. From your outstretched fingers erupts a jet of flame that you play first over the climber and then over the others standing below. They barely have time to scream before they are no more than four smoldering corpses on the ground. A fine mess you made of them. Reginald's voice startles you. He now stands behind you, grinning down on the carnage. He must have found another way in. I loathe goblins, you say. As do all good men. You have struck terror into their advance party, but they will call for reinforcements. 
We have the wall. Can we hold them? Reginald asks. We could go in. You point to the castle keep beyond the courtyard. The castle is three stories tall, or at least it has been before the top layer particularly collapsed. The second story is barely any better, and the fourth is a lifeless still as a painting. Nevertheless, you wonder if anyone is looking back at you from the dark windows and the arrow slits of the ruins. What do you suggest? Ah, uh, let's enter the castle. Two are not enough to fend all four walls. Away to the keep, you shout. You run across the courtyard and open the large wooden double doors, which shriek rusty hinges. Unlocked? This may be a trap. My friend, we best be on our guard, Reginald says. Once inside, Reginald slams the bar on the door. The entrance chamber is large with a high vaulted ceiling. The stone walls are cracked and flaking. The ground is drawn with loose rubble. The air is stale. Aside from the double doors behind you, there are closed wooden doors on the north, east, and west walls. Near the north door, there is a stairwell going up, but it is blocked by rubble. It is not long before the front doors begin to rattle violently. Through the nearby arrow slit, you can see the glowing eyes and a gallant of axe choppings away at the door. You're not sure how long the barred portal will hold them. Reginald wants to hide deeper in the castle. On the other hand, this place smells of death. It might be prudent to take a few seconds to investigate the room and the doors. What do you do now? Uh, what I'm going to do now is end the game off here on a cliffhanger. And this is pretty good read along. But we pretty much know exactly what this game is about now. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. This is Twy and Game. Twy out. Mm -hmm.